Hello there, and welcome to the notes for 7.3. We are still going to be working with our rationals, or fractions, but now we're going to add and subtract them. And in order to do this, we're going to look at pizzas, because we need to cover some basics. We need to figure out why it is that adding and subtracting seems so much more cumbersome. Okay, so we're going to look at pizza, because pizza is not as cumbersome. So hopefully you're not hungry. All right, we have two pizzas. Maybe we had a party with a small group of friends. And according to the fraction below, half of this pizza is remaining. Personally, I don't know well, who ate the first half. Or Yeah, I mean, there's fungus on this pizza. There's gross stuff. There's a leaf on the pizza. I mean, we don't know why. It, yeah. Anyway, half the pizza is left at the end of the party. See, there's a fungus right there. Look at that. That's, who wants to eat fungus on their pizza? It's disgusting. Okay. Anyway, um, half this pizza is left. Now, there's another piece of pizza over here. And for this pizza, according to the fraction, one-third of it is left. So we're going to cut this pizza into three pieces. It was probably cut into more, but right now we're going to cut it into three pieces and we're going to kind of etch out two of those so we only have one of the three pieces or the three pieces left. So one of the three will be remaining. We'll let that guy in the upper left remain. And everybody else we're going to kind of just scratch out here. There we go. Okay. Now, to save on space, because, you know, maybe we're going to put it in the fridge and we're going to eat it for breakfast tomorrow, who knows, we're going to put these into the same, onto the same pizza dish. So here's an empty pizza dish over here. So we'll make half of this for the gross fungus pizza. There we are. And the other part of it will be for the good-looking pizza, which just has... Maybe pepperoni, maybe meatball, maybe sausages, but it's the mmm pizza. It's a good one. And then this is just dark down here because that's, yeah, we don't know what that is. That's, that is just left over. All right, so we have both pizzas on now the same pizza dish. The fungus and the mmm pizza. So how much of this dish is covered in pizza? Well, in theory, we could just add it up. One half plus one third is two. We have, well, we have two pieces on there, but that doesn't tell us how much of the dish. Is. There's a whole circle here. It's not two. There's just one circle. Well, maybe we can add the bottom. Two plus three is five. Okay, here's the problem. Two fifths is less than half. There's more than half of that covered. So this is why adding fractions can be cumbersome. We need to figure out what does that two mean? Where in the world are we getting the number two and the number three? What does it mean? How does it relate to the pieces? Well, and what's going on is two is telling us how much the whole has been divided up. And in a way, it's telling us how big each piece is. So the bigger the denominator, the smaller each piece, because you've divided it up into more and more things. So what it's basically doing, that's a unit down there. It's saying, it's telling us the size of our pizza piece, our pizza slice. It's similar to, let's, let's talk height. Let's say that in the eighth grade, you were five feet tall at the start of the eighth grade. And then maybe over the course of the year, maybe you grew another four inches. Okay, now these are two different sizes. Feet is, I mean, feet's pretty big. Inches is just a little guy. Let's just add them together. How tall am I now? I'm nine. Nine what? Nine feet? Nine inches? It doesn't make any sense. So you need to be talking about the same sizes or the same lengths. Okay, so you could put it all into feet and get 5.3 feet. You could put it all into inches and get 64 inches, 12 inches in a foot, 60 plus 4, and 4 inches is a third of a foot. So you could do that. You just can't get 9, though. You can't add things that are different units. And that's what's happening with fractions. 
The denominator is tracking size, which means it's acting like a unit. So what if we made these guys the same units? What if we made the pizza pieces roughly the same size? And this is not an exact diagram, so it's not going to look exactly the same, but all right, now I've got six pieces and two of them are remaining. So I'm going to rewrite that fraction. There's two remaining pieces and they've been divided into six altogether. And that's that fraction conversion. We're going to do the same thing with that one half. Let's divide that pizza into six parts so that all the pieces are roughly the same size. Well, that should be three six. So here we are. We're going to divide up the pizza into pieces that are roughly the same size. It's not an exact diagram, but well, now it's like inches and inches and feet and feet. Now we're talking about the same sizes, and the reason we can talk about the same sizes is the denominator now matches. It's a unit or a unit measurement. So we'll translate that cut up thing. So we had three fungus slices and two of the mmm stuff. Okay, so there are now five pieces in something that was originally divided into six. So three six plus two six is five six. So if you've forgotten, that's where all of this is coming from. Okay, one other, just an example that you probably have sitting around in your kitchen is measuring cups. So if you think about a one half measuring cup, it's a cup that measures half of a full thing. And a one-third measuring cup is going to be a little bit smaller because it's a cup that's been cut into three pieces, and you're only measuring one of those pieces. A quarter cup, same thing. So let's say that this big thing over here where I'm running out of paper is one cup. So as the denominator gets bigger, your parts get smaller if you're only talking about one of those parts. So they're measuring size. They're measuring units. And it's why when you add fractions, the denominator doesn't change because it's just a unit measurement. It just goes along for the ride. Moving on, we are now going to look at how do you do this with rationals involving polynomials. The denominator is key. Okay? The denominator is like units, okay? And for addition, also for subtraction, it has to match, okay? It must match because if it doesn't match, it's like adding five feet and four inches and calling it nine. Doesn't work, okay? Now for part one, which is what we're working on today, for part one, all of your denominators are going to match, so you're not going to have to worry about that part, okay? We'll do that in part two. Now the denominator doesn't add to itself. Okay, What's adding is the number on top. The denominator is tracking how big each part is. So you're adding three and two and you're getting five parts and all the denominator does is tell you how big they are. So you're still working with the same size of parts. So it's only the numerator that adds. Okay, and in between there, we have the addition sign. We can go ahead and put 4m in over there because whatever that means, that's how big it is. Now, there's a group. See the group? You can tell because it's a subtraction sign. All right. Okay, now this group is going to add to the group behind it. Okay, now we could factor something out of the group, but we don't want to do that. Okay, don't factor anything out of the group. Okay, just add them. Okay, and all we're going to do is combine like terms. That's all we're looking for. Simple addition. So we've got an M, more M's, we're adding, so hopefully we get a 12M. We have a minus 3N, it's just sitting there staring at us, so there it is in the back, a minus 3N. Ta-da! We have a negative 3N. Okay, 
Problem done. Mm, maybe. Okay, we have created a new group on top. Groups can add to each other by combining like terms, as long as they're just kind of solo groups. And what they do is they create new groups. We can factor out a greatest common factor. 3 goes on to both 12 and 3. And remember, it's kind of backwards distributing. You should be able to distribute it and get back to your original problem. Okay, the reason we're factoring it is we're looking to see if at the very end, does anything cancel? We kind of don't want to cancel early on. We could cancel those M's, but the denominators match. Don't mess with matching denominators if you're adding, okay? Because then you have to match them all over again. So don't mess with the denominators. Now we've got a three and a four, they don't cancel. The four in the polynomial, you cannot cancel that with the 4 on the bottom, okay? Because remember what we've learned about how and how not to cancel, is you cannot cancel parts of polynomials, okay? So no parts of the polynomials can cancel all by themselves. You have to cancel the whole thing, or you can't cancel any of it, which means that this is the answer. Nothing's going to cancel, and that's pretty typical. Generally, there's not a lot of canceling when you're adding and subtracting. Sometimes you get lucky. Eh, not this time. All right, we're going to try another problem. We have matching denominators, so that's always important. There are groups up on top. I like to, I just like to remind myself that they are groups, and they are adding, and it is okay to add through parentheses. You're just combining like terms, and this is important, and this is why we didn't pull a three out of the group back on the first problem. You need just a solo group, okay? Just a single group in the numerator adding with another single group. You don't want anything else, okay? You don't want anything trying to times into the group. You just want single groups. So we have a 2x combining like terms. And it looks like this back part's going to get us an 8y. And there it is. All right, and now we're, that's we have created a new group, just like we did in the last problem. We have created a new group, and we can factor something out of this new group. We can pull a 2 out. And again, the reason we're doing this is we're looking to see if anything will cancel or divide. The group is kind of set. There is nothing anywhere, there's no other matching group, but the 2 is no longer part of the group. The 2 is now on its own, and that 2 can reduce with the 12. So we get a 1 and a 6, and the 1 is frequently hidden if something else is hanging around near it. So you can put the 1, but I'm going to lose the 1. Okay, so we've got the group left on top. There can be a 1 outside, but eh, it can be a hidden 1. And then what's left on the bottom is a 6y. So in this instance, it did reduce. So this is why you pull things out. Okay? You're, so don't leave it as 2x plus 8y over 12y because it can go down further. So when you simplify these adding and subtracting rationals, you do have to get them as simple as they can go. That involves reducing, factoring, canceling, if it's possible. All right, there are many groups on this one, but fortunately for us, the denominators still match. We like that. That's what we want to see. These are subtracting, though. That's going to do something a little bit different in the numerators, but the denominators, that part of it is actually going to be the same. The subtraction applies to the entire second numerator. I have found the easiest way to do this is to distribute the subtraction sign and then do the like terms. Okay, so distribute the subtraction sign and then do what you were doing with addition. So that makes a negative 6m and a positive 2. Okay, and now we're going to combine like terms. So the one hang-up on subtraction is you have to distribute the negative and then combine like terms. So an m and a negative 6m, 
is a negative 5n. We then have a negative 6 and a positive 2 because that negative distributed, so the 2 is positive. That gives us minus 4, and we have created a new group. Okay, that negative 5n and or 5m and minus 4, a new group. The denominator is just a unit of measurement. It's telling us how big these parts are. So it just carries along and says, yep, you're still working with the same size of parts. Okay. Um, the best we could do on top as far as factoring, we could pull a negative, but I'm not seeing a reason to. You could pull a negative 1 if you wanted to. But the bottom, you can factor something out of the bottom. You can pull out a 2. So let's see if we get anything that might look like it could possibly cancel. I'm thinking no. Okay. You cannot cancel the negative 4s because you cannot cancel parts. Don't cancel parts of polynomials. You either have to cancel the entire parenthesis or none of it. So, no, nah, that's not canceling. And there's a lone 2. No other numbers. So that is the final answer. Like I said, most of these don't have canceling. About as about the best you can get is reducing a couple of numbers sometimes. Okay, this guy is also subtracting. So let's find our groups. You remember groups have plus and minuses going on in them. Okay, we can factor stuff out of the denominator, but I'm not going to because they match. So I don't want to mess with matching denominators. So I'm just going to let them sit there. I will, though, be distributing that negative sign. So we now have a minus m and a minus 5. Okay, so I'm going to scratch that off there because it's distributed. And now I'm just going to combine like terms. Okay, once you get negatives distributed, addition and subtraction are pretty much the same. m minus m is nothing. So we, we've lost our m's. We still have a 1 and a negative 5, so we've got a negative 4 on top, but m minus m is gone. So we have 0 m or no m. Okay. Once you've combined it into a single fraction, now is the time to think about, can I factor anything out? Can I pull anything out? And from the bottom, the answer is yes, you can pull out an 8. Okay, that should be a 1. That should be m minus 1. So we'll pretend it says 1. But I think I was already thinking about the 4 canceling the 8 and got a little bit ahead of myself in my thought. And I'm recording the audio afterwards, so sorry. So pretend that says a 1. Okay, the 4 is going to reduce to 1. The 8 is going to reduce to 2, which is, I think, where my random 2 showed up. So we get a negative 1 over, and we have a 2 now, and pretend this says m minus 1. It doesn't, but just pretend it does. So this, kind of like the one above it, does reduce. And that's about as much canceling as these usually have. Sometimes you find something that reduces.